Welcome class to your landscape painting project. Now in this project you're going to want to find that image of a landscape. Um, for me I found an image of the delicate arch uh, right over here and that's an image that I found and I think I really like. Um, I went to Arches the other, um, you probably see some videos of me at Arches, but I went there and I really like that image. So I'm going to use that as my reference. And I got my painting palette, which looks like this for me. For you, yours will be the square that you came with your supplies. Um, and I got some paper or some watercolor paper, which you should have as well. And I'm going to tape this watercolor paper down to here. And this is just a piece of cardboard. Now, something to consider through this class because we'll be working with it so much. Um, is you'll always be taping your stuff down to something hard. So if you want to find a board or um, a piece of, you know, any sort of a solid object that you'll be able to tape these different canvases and um, watercolor papers down to, I think that would be a good idea. So I got my brush, which will probably be this one that I'll use the most. I might bring in one of the other bigger brushes just for uh, certain effects, but when I'm doing this drawing, which is what I'll do after I tape down the piece of paper, um, I'm going to draw out in pencil, and then I'm going to actually, to create a bold effect, which you won't have to do, I would say just sketch it out lightly and then go into the watercolors. But what I'm going to do is once I tape down the piece of paper, I'll draw it out in pencil, and then I'm going to actually go over it with a bold, dark color from maybe a Sharpie or a pen, and We'll see how that turns out. I've just been kind of try, wanting to try this effect that's, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. And then after I get the bold Sharpie down, I'll give you another update and then we'll go in with the watercolors and um, play with setting the mood with the color and kind of getting that color just right, thinking of complementary colors and all the different uh, color theory that goes into watercolor painting. Um, one thing to remember with watercolors is layers and how everything needs a lot of layers. But I'm going to get going on taping this down and doing the drawing and I'll give you an update soon. Alright, so I got my drawing kind of sketched in and then I added this dark, bold, um, permanent marker or um, sharpie, no matter what you want to call it. So that's what I'm looking at. And now I'm going to bring you over my shoulder and kind of show you how I'll move the different colors around to create the the landscape behind and also in the foreground and the um but it'll probably be in the foreground and in the arch um it'll probably be you know multiple layers so as you can kind of see me develop the different layers um then you can think about how you would do that in your own work now remember with watercolors that it's if you want to fill big areas to add the water first and then add the color and if you want to just do small little details you can add a lot of color to your brush and then bring it in. Um, yeah, here's my updated kind of check-in and I'll bring you over my shoulder and show you as I develop the color. Now I've never really done um, this exact process on this paper so as usual I'm kind of just exploring and a um, little trial and error and see if it works out. If not that's all right, but I know the paper you have will be actually uh, more suitable than this paper I'm using right here. So hopefully it doesn't totally reject it, but I don't think it will. I'll uh, bring you over my shoulder, show you what's going on. Thanks for uh, working on this. I'm really excited to see what kind of landscapes you can come up with for this project.
closure on the inside, ulcer on the outside. Footsteps tap two. So you kind of got to see my process as I went, and actually the paper did not handle at least as well as I was hoping, but that's alright. Um, now it wasn't exactly with what the image is, and I might come back in with some colored pens because the paper didn't really do with what I wanted, but um, anyway, I kind of got the watercolor. It's a more graphic style watercolor. Um, I'll have an image of it when I'm done here and it dries down, see how it looks. Um, yeah, that was your watercolor landscape. As you can see, I don't want it to be super detailed. Um, and I would even suggest taking, if it's a bigger sheet of paper for your watercolors, maybe taking and using a smaller amount of it um, for this assignment so that you have some later on and you can maybe do a weekly drawing or do something else fun with the watercolor paper. Um, but you wouldn't have to use your whole big sheet. You could use a smaller sheet. And thanks for uh, stopping in and checking out the watercolor landscape process um, in my work I you know I still have to maybe go in but I kind of I always try to keep the edges a little bit darker and have the light where I want it so I have you know the brightest part of the canvas is the foreground then there's the middle ground right here and then there's the background so it kind of creates those three different levels that you'll learn about later in this class um, yeah I don't know it's an interesting image I think it reminds me of definitely of something that you'd see with like more of an illustration rather than an actual like fine artist work of magical art, which is actually kind of fun. I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, thanks for stopping in and good luck with your watercolor landscapes. Look forward to seeing them. Thanks. All right.